Hello, I'm Charles Moffat, and it's book review time. Followed by a uh, unboxing video. Anyway, I need to talk about this. So this is Tad Williams' uh, book, The Dragon Bone Chair, which I've been wanting to read for a while. Quite a while. And some of you may remember me unboxing this uh, book a while back. Uh, quite a while back, so just go back in the videos, you'll find it. Anyway, so, uh, having finished it, I just finished reading it today, just this morning. There's my bookmark. Over the way over here with the uh, list of people, all the characters. There's a lot of characters in this book. And so it's got a big long list of characters. Uh, you know, and they're, they're separated in terms of where they're basically from. Like, this is the Urkenlanders. And then there's the Hernestiri, and then the Rimmer's Men, and there's the Nabane, a whole bunch of them, the Sithi. Now, the Sithi are basically like these elves-like people. And then there's the others, which is like including Binibic. Binibic is one of the characters that you see on the cover. Okay, he's the one with the arrows stuck in him right here. Now, what you don't understand here is Binibic is a troll. Trolls in uh, uh, the world of Ostenard, as they're more like dwarves in a way. So they're called trolls, but they're really more like dwarves. And I'm going to come back to that in a bit. So there's various other things that are not such. And then there's places, a list of places, okay? Creatures, things, just things. And then there's list of things like 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 Benedict's auguring tools like th these are things that he uses to predict the future uh and then there's a a pronunciation guide here so like a pronunciation nation guide to Urkenlandish and then Hernestiri Rimmerspach Nabane Kanuk Sithi and then also just like weird names like exceptional names uh and then words and phrases Ernestary phrases, like Nabonet phrases, Rimmerspeak, Rimmerspeak phrases, Kanuk phrases, Sithi phrases, and so forth. Yeah, there we go. Basically, yeah, this, this, this is a dense book. It's like 700 plus pages, 766. And I, I'm going to tell you right now, if you're reading this book, you're going to discover that it's remarkably similar to Game of Thrones. And yet... This book came out in 1988. The first Game of Thrones book came out in 1996. And you go, wait, how could these be similar? Unless George R. R. Martin basically read this book and then took huge influences from it. Like, quite a few influences from it. Um, and this isn't, you know, something unusual. Like, authors do this all the time. They, uh, they'll basically read various other books and... You know, they'll have an idea like, hey, if I combine this with this and this and that, and now I'll make my own book. And this is one of the, basically the one of the primary sources for Game of Thrones. And I'm going to illustrate why, okay? Okay. Giants in both books. Large white wolves in both books. Okay. Characters that are basically of unknown parentage, okay? So like Jon Snow in this, and then Simon in this, and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna get back to the Simon a bit later because like this book itself has influences from other books. So we'll, well, I'm coming back to that, okay? And this, you know, it doesn't list, it doesn't end there. The Dragon Bone Chair is basically the Iron Throne, you know, like like if you just look at this, this is the Iron Throne right there. That's, that's, the Dragon Bone Chair, okay? So it's it's all these different things that are in this book. Like, just when you think, like, there's not, you know, there's something missing, you read it, like, oh, okay, um, the Hound, okay? There's literally a character in here. His name is... One second, let's go back to the others. His name... Where'd it go? Where'd it go? No, 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 so he's, it was listed under... Uh, where was it? 
Anyway, yeah, his, his name is Injun. Anyway, Injun is the hound, basically. He, he rides around with, like, the, this, uh, this hound helmet on, and he has, uh, like, a whole pack of hounds that help him track things. So the hound character is there. Uh, it's just a long list of, like, all the different characters. Even Shay. You think of Shay as being a character that appears in Game of Thrones? There is a character here called Vorsheva. Okay? Vorsheva is Shay. It's the exact same character. He basically just changed the name, and it's the same character otherwise. The Storm King, okay? There you go. The Storm King? That's the Night King in Game of Thrones. It's just a big long list. Binabic, the uh, troll character? He's basically Tyrion. That's what he is. Um, you know, he, he doesn't have Tyrion's uh, personality in the same way, but he's basically Tyrion. That's, you know, he's, you know, he's the dwarf character. Uh, the, El the, the Sithi that appear in this, they're basically the equivalent of the wildlings. And the uh, children of the forest found in Game of Thrones. So the children of the forest, the wildlings... That's all that stuff is basically the Sithy right there. And it's just, you know, the 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 amount of things that cross over from one from this book to Game of Thrones is just ridiculous. Like um the book basically starts with like um this one king dies, okay? And King John. And uh oh look who dies in the very bit start start you know like like half part way through this book, uh, you know the king dies, and then it's you know his heirs are fighting over who gets the throne, and it's like it's just and and you can see similarities between characters like Th uh, Stannis and also uh, other characters and you know even plot lines, the plot lines the characters it's just. Everything just feels like it's like it's the same story written by a different author. It feels very, very similar. But here's the beauty part of this. Tad Williams finished writing this series. Okay? The series is done. The books are done. I have the second book right here. I'm about to, you know, I'm going to open this in another video very soon. But this is the beauty of it. You can read this series of books book one of, you know, Memory, Sorrow, and Thorn. This is book two right here. And you can read the whole series, and you basically are going to end up with the end of Game of Thrones. That's really what it is. That's, it's the ending to Game of Thrones. You don't need to wait for George R. R. Martin to finish his books. You just need to read these ones, and, you know, and then, you know, book three and so forth, of Austin, this art, Austin, this series set in Austin Ard. Okay, so there's the Dragon Bone Chair, Stone of Farewell, and to Green Angel Tower. Just read those books instead, and you basically have the ending to Game of Thrones. You don't need to read these anymore and wait for George R. Martin to finally come out with his books. Uh, you can just read these, and you'll you'll be perfectly happy with like, yep, yeah, that's a good ending. It's good. Goodbye, Ant. Goodbye, Ant. Get off my table. <laughs> okay. And. What, what a wonderful book. This is such a great book just to be reading. But I am going to, you know, stop for a second. And I'm going to talk about Simon for a second. Okay? So the main character is Simon. Who's basically, you know, in some ways like, you know, Jon Snow. Um, Simon starts off basically in this book as a scullion. Okay? And if you've ever read Gormenghast, or um, the previous book that came before Gormenghast, which is, uh, what's it called? Um, my mind is blanked right now. Anyway, read the Gormenghast trilogy. Uh, in that, there is a character called Steerpike. Steerpike is effectively the same character as Simon, okay? So it's... But, but it's interesting because Steerpike is the villain, okay? So they have similar origin stories in terms of Simon and Steerpike. And then, you know, similar things going on, you know, with Simon and, and Jon Snow. So you can kind of see, like, 
where the authors got it from. So you can see that George R. Martin must have read these books and he fell in love with them and then decided to write his own books. And Tad Williams must have read Gormenghast, okay? Because you know, it, it, it's, it's just you know, unfathomable, you know, to, to him have come up with this any other way. So, it's like, the character, Steer Pike, you know, basically born in this giant castle called Gormenghast, and here we have Simon, born in this giant castle called uh, Hayholt. Same principles. Oh, look, Jon Snow, born in a giant castle called Winterfell. There you go. Uh, and... Here he is, this character. You don't know who his parents are. You don't know anything about him uh, uh, regarding, you know, his parentage. And same thing with Steer Pike. You don't know really know where his parents came from. And they're both scullions in this case. Jon Snow is not a scullion. He's a bastard. So there's a different story going on there. Uh, so the story has, you know, changed from time to time. But it's interesting to see where the authors basically diverged and how they effectively changed the story over time. So, the, you know, this basically has influences from Gormenghast. It also has influences from Lord of the Rings, okay? So you can see how this book is influenced by Lord of the Rings and Gormenghast at the same time. And then over here, you know, this effectively has taken its influences from this a lot of influences from this and you it's, it's just amazing how similar the books are um, now I do want to talk about briefly also the map if I can find it where's the map there we go so this this is not the greatest uh, map but it's basically it gives you a, a decent idea of okay so there's the Hayholt and there's Ermsheim which is a mountain which you know becomes important later on and various other things here going on and of course the back of the book with all that big long list of names and also places and things and pronunciation guides like this this is actually a pretty well put together book so you're getting everything you basically want in the book you know right there so you get uh, you, you know you get individual maps of the Hayholt and other things like that. So it's just, this is a, a wonderful book. Like you have everything that you want right here in the book and you just you don't need anything else. And just a wonderfully written book. Uh, like I having uh, read Gormenghast and other books, uh, it's, it's just a, it, it's, it's, and having read all these of course as well. Uh, and you know, I not to you know not to knock on George Martin. His books are very good. His books are definitely very good. But now that I know that, like he basically just copied off of you know Tad Williams. That just like oh okay, so a lot of these ideas aren't necessarily original. But this this is what we authors do. I'm afraid, and and, and these ideas aren't original to him either. Like a lot of his stuff comes from Gorman Gas and also. Um, the Lord of the Rings. So, a lot of authors, I'm afraid this is just what we do. We uh, we tend to copy off of, of uh, the people who came before us, like uh, standing on their shoulders, so to speak. And I myself, my own series of uh, Rathgar books have influences from Jon Snow. So, like, Rathgar is basically similar to Jon Snow, Aragorn, and Conan the Barbarian. Like, he's just a, a mesh of those three characters of Jon Snow, Aragorn, and Conan the Barbarian. It's just, that's what Rathgar is. Um, and this is what we authors do. So it's not like we're creating these things out of nothing. We're, we're, we're accumulating stories, and then we take what we like and we turn it into a new story and say, okay, here's my story. Please read it. And there will be definitely be similarities between various stories because you can you can tell what they are, okay. So in this, yes, okay. There's the wolves, you know, like the giant white wolf, uh, Kantaka. And in this, the giant white wolf is ghost. And then in mine, 
I have wolves in mine. I just haven't given one of them a name yet. So, to be continued on that topic. Anyway, yes. If you would like Game of Thrones, go read this. Read the other books that come with it. Read all the Austin Roller books, honestly. Like, these are really good books. And the beauty of it is that the series is finished. You can read all of it, and you don't have to worry about, like, oh, I wish the author would come out with the new book. Nope. You can just read all of them right now. Okay. That's enough for now. I'm Charles Moffat. Please uh, like, subscribe, that sort of thing. And I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.